Okay, why bother learning about free energy? Is it that useful? Uh, let's show that the answer to that with a few example problems. The first question says the following. Inside an integrated circuit are thin conducting aluminum strips. So inside your phone or your devices, this is how you conduct electricity oftentimes with these little strips. So the question is, if these are brought in contact with silica, what is silica? Silica is SiO2, so silicon dioxide. SiO2, that is silica. Whenever you hear something with just the uh on the end, it usually means the oxide. So like alumina is Al2O3. It's not aluminum, it's alumina. So it's the oxide. Okay, so the aluminum is in contact with silica. It says, would there be a tendency for them to react if the free energy of formation under standard conditions uh, is equal to negative 1456 kilojoules per mole for alumina and negative 783.3 kilojoules per mole for silica? And those, both of these values are at 700 Kelvin. Um, those are not like general values. Those exist as a function of temperature. So how do we figure this out? The first thing we need to do is it's asking if there's a tendency for them to react. So should we, we should write down the chemical reaction, okay? Um, when we react alumina, aluminum with silica, SiO2, what will form? So there's the possibility to form alumina, Al2O3, and silicon, okay? Now that's not balanced currently, so we have to balance this equation. So we're going to put 4 over here, 2 over there. So now we have 6 oxygens on the right hand side, which means we need 3 of those and 3 of those. That is now a balanced chemical equation. Okay. So the next step is what? So if you want to know whether or not it's going to happen, whether or not this reaction takes place as it's written here, we need to figure out is delta G right? Is delta G greater than or less than zero? That's the question, right? Is it greater than or less than zero? To solve that, we have the following. So we know that delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT natural log of Q. Now in this reaction, everything is a solid. The aluminum, the silica, the alumina, and the silicon, those are all solids. Therefore, Q is just equal to 1, and the natural log of 1, the natural log of 1 is just equal to 0, so this whole term goes away, okay? Now what is delta G naught? What's the change in free energy under standard conditions? Well, the change in free energy under standard conditions is equal to the products minus reactants of the energy of formation values. So we're going to sum up the products. That's going to be a value of 2 multiplied by the alumina value, which is negative 1456 kilojoules per mole, um, plus 3 times silicon. But silicon is in its elemental state, so it's just 0. We can, we can ignore it. The same thing on the other side. Aluminum is in its elemental state, so we can ignore it. But it's going to be 3 multiplied by the value for silica, which is negative 783.3. That's kilojoules per mole as well. So when we take those and we do the math on them, we find out that the total change in free energy for the system is negative 562.1 kilojoules per mole at 700 Kelvin. So at this temperature, the change in the free energy of the reaction is very negative. Because it's negative, we know that this is a favorable reaction. It's going to be spontaneous. Okay. Um, so you would expect oxidation should occur. Oxidation should occur. These, alumina, the, these aluminum strips are going to be turning into alumina. Now, why do we actually use aluminum strips in devices? Even though thermodynamically this is favorable, it's not chemically fa favorable. This is limited by diffusion, so it's actually very slow. So even though it's favorable, it doesn't happen very quickly, and we can get away with using them. That's the first example.